I'm Matthew Higgins and this is Australia's Snowy Mountains. Seems like a big landscape when you're in it, but Australia's snow country accounts for only one tenth of one percent of the Australian landmass. It's a small area, but highly significant. There are plants and animals found here that are seen nowhere else in the world. There's a strong cultural heritage, both indigenous and European, seen especially in the historic huts of the high country. Put on a pair of cross-country skis and you can travel for as long or as far as you like. But how much longer will we continue to have snow in Australia? Come for a ski with me. Australians have been skiing since the Kyandra Gold Rush of the 1860s. Miners made skis out of alpine ash and began a new recreational pursuit. A hundred years later and resorts were blooming, where skiers caught lifts uphill to ski back down again. Cross-country skiers have a different approach. They explore the backcountry, experiencing the snow landscape, the mountain environment, wildlife, historic huts and enjoying the fun runs downhill. used by cross-country skiers were built for shelter and continue to provide it. They were erected for different purposes. Horse Camp was constructed for surveyors on the Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme in the 1950s. It's a good spot for a break, a bite to eat and a chance to plan the trek ahead. Most huts were built as shelter for stockmen on the summer grazing leases. White's River dates from 1935 and has sheltered many a blizzard-bound ski party. Like most huts, it is maintained largely by volunteers affiliated with the Kosciuszko Huts Association. Sesjacks was built by stockmen Sess O'Brien and Jack Bolton in 1942 and stands right on the Great Dividing Range. Many skiers have used it as a base to explore the beautiful Jagungal wilderness nearby. To the north are gold miners huts around Kyandra. Four Mile was built by Bob Hughes in 1937. It's tiny, but a lifesaver nonetheless a beaut spot for a brew out of the weather. Broken Dam Hut was burnt down in 1998, but recently rebuilt by Kosciuszko National Park staff and volunteers. Many huts lost in the 2003 bushfires have also been rebuilt. Way down south is Teddy's, another stockman's hut. This is my first return visit to Teddy's hut. I came here in 1987 on skis with a friend John Stevens. At that time I was writing a little booklet about the hut and in fact that night I interviewed Dave Pendergast who was one of the hut's three builders. Dave since passed away as have the other builders of Teddy's so it's even more important that this hut survives. It's been a ruin for years and only in the last couple of years have park staff uh, reinstated some of the missing timbers from the walls and generally stabilised the building and fix up the uh, fireplace and now it's a wonderful little outpost in this wilderness south of Threadbow. A big part of the snow experience is the aesthetic appeal. The beauty of the winter mountains is just so powerful. Even bushfire burned areas are softened by snow. Snow influences not just people, but also animals and plants. Many birds migrate away for the winter. Those that stay show amazing resilience during blizzards. Animals too either move out or adapt to the winter snow. Wombats bulldoze their way around to feed. Really small mammals like mountain pygmy possums and broad-toothed rats live under the snow, insulated from the coldest air above. Snow gums have evolved to handle the weight of snow loading in winter. There are introduced animals too. Wild horses, brumbies, are loved by many people inspired by Banjo Patterson's epic poem, The Man from Snowy River. 
but they are loathed by others who see them as destructive feral pests. Park managers are trying to reduce Brumby numbers through live trapping at yards like these. It's a difficult and emotive issue. Another management issue is ongoing development at ski resorts. Over recent decades, many more lifts and accommodation options have appeared above the snow line as numbers of skiers and snowboarders have increased. But wild horses and resort pressures pale into insignificance against the major issue confronting Australia's high country, climate change. Scientific research predicts vast changes for this area with a rising snow line. As we've seen, snow is integral to everything. Loss of snow could have devastating impacts. Species may disappear, skiing may disappear, and there'll be other changes. There's an old expression used by mountain people, it doesn't snow like it used to. That sounds anecdotal, but there is evidence for its truth. Not only is there oral history, but diaries and snow records which recorded annual falls. More importantly, there's current research projects by the ANU, CSIRO, Griffith University and the Bureau of Meteorology, all concluding snowfall is either lessened or will lessen further. There have always been bad snow years. Just as Australia's rainfall is notoriously variable, so is its snowfall. But worrying trends are emerging. Normally, Mount Jagungal would be covered in snow from base to summit in August, but this was the view in August 2006. Fifty years of records from Spencer's Creek show snow lasting till at least late October, but increasingly the season has ended in September. Around the world, mountains mean water, much of it coming from snow. And that's true here too. The Murray River's mountain catchment occupies less than 2% of the Murray-Darling Basin, yet provides 33% of the river's flow. Less snow means less water for our nation's irrigation food bowl. The snowy scheme produces hydroelectricity and irrigation water. What would the snowy be without snow? Three years ago, in August 2006, I actually walked in here with a friend, Tony Baxter, mid-winter walking. So poor was the snow cover that year. Luckily, now in July 2009, we've got a better cover, but we'll still need more snow this year for the depths to reach anything like a sort of average to good year. The impact of climate change and the increased pace of climate change, which we're only now becoming aware of, is something that I'm sure is weighing heavily on the hearts and minds of all of us who love the Australian high country. We simply can't afford to lose all of this. Oh.